Once you've finished all of your cutouts, it's time to prepare for printing. So we're going to need to remove a whole bunch of stuff, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. You cannot use a laser printer with all of these dots and numbers, red lines all over it. So we're going to remove all those. I'm going to show you how. First step is just to remove the label. So I just highlight each line, and then I go over and I unclip the label. I do this for each one. It is tedious, it takes a long time, but it has to happen. So go ahead on your own and remove all of your labels. Again, I'm almost right. The next step is you need to get rid of all of these points, these red or uh, purple points at the end. The easiest way is to actually hit shift because then you can highlight a whole bunch at a time. And I just hide all and they go away. So go ahead and you're going to just hide all of these again, as I said, and they disappear. You not only need to get rid of the big circle points like these ones here, you also need to get rid of these little circles as well. So I'm going to hit all of these also and hide them so they go away. Now an important step now is before I hide all of these lines of reflection, what I want to do is I want to kind of compress everything and um, I want to make these as tight as I can. So I'm actually going to move some of these lines of reflections. And what I'm trying to do is bring everything as close together as possible so that when it prints, um, it doesn't use as much paper. So I'm going to be moving these around a little bit here and trying to bring them really close together. So you want to move it up. I'm going to do as much as I can to try to bring these together. All right, so now I've made it much more compact. All the shapes are together. So to prepare for printing, we now need to build a rectangle around it that is 20 by 12 to replicate the size of the sheet that we're going to print on. So first I'm going to make a line. I'm going to try to actually use this grid to help me out so I can try and stay as straight as possible. And I need that line um, to be 20, right, for the outside of that. So let's just label that. I'm also going to give it a different color so it's, no, it's not part of mine. I think I'll make it red since it's going to be the outline. And this is now 20. Awesome. And now I need 12 going up. So I'm going to go ahead and make another line starting here using this grid so I can try to make sure I've got right angles. I'm going to go up to here. I think it's 12. I'm not sure. Let's find out. And uh, label it. Make it red. It's 13. So I'm going to need to make it 12. So I'm going to move things around a little bit to try to make it all fit inside of here. So I'm moving this down, and it looks like I'm now having it fit. So I will now finish building um, the square around it, making it 12 all the way around, and 20 along here. So now just the final cleanup. I need to get rid of these numbers. I need to get rid of the background. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight all of my uh, lines of reflection first, and hide all, and then I'm going to un label these two lines here and the very last element of it I'm going to get rid of the grid. I now am ready to go. Ooh, except for I have a dot right there so check that and hide that dot. All right. So I will hit save and I will email my Desmos link to jhewitt at pps.net. This is really important. The subject needs to be your first name, comma, your teacher's name, comma, and the period of math that you are in.